Hey everyone, this is where I left off last night and I wanted to give these stripes a chance to dry overnight. Uh, a lot of people think acrylic dries really, really quickly and it does, but in order for it to dry like really completely, it's good to give it some extra time. Uh, this is on canvas again, so um, I did feel a certain amount of absorbency with it between the canvas and the fact that it's covered with gesso, but now this is really nice and dry. So one thing I wanna try is just sanding it again with this sanding block. Um, the paint was thicker here in some cases. Uh, some areas I wiped it back like here and here. I wiped it while it was still wet, but now I want to try the sanding block. So. What I'm interested in is like, how does sanding with this sander compare to when I just wiped it back? Because obviously it's a lot easier to wipe back wet paint than it would be to sand. And like, I don't really see too much of a difference. I guess if I keep sanding, I, when I wipe this back, I wiped it back a lot so that I could, you know, I can really see the colors behind it. Whereas here, what's happening is when I sand it, it just catches the, the bumps um, that are like thicker paint. And if there's any texture, it's gonna pick up that. So right now I could keep sanding it. I'm probably gonna be using this quite a bit. I mean, I want some rectilinear lines. Um, I'm not quite sure. It's, I haven't, you know, really thought about the shape, but I just want to keep layering. So I might start over here. Let's keep it kind of simple at first. And it's always a shock when you see <laughs> these real, you know, you're going from a lot of midtones to all of a sudden there's this very high key paint. Um, but I want to see how evenly I can put this on. I don't want it to look like there's a lot of brush strokes. So I'm trying to be a little bit careful as to how this looks. Okay, so right here what I'm doing is uh, I'm being, I'm sort of thinking about the shapes that are in the underpainting. Um, for example, this notch that I'm painting right now. And in a pattern piece, um, if you're a sewer, you see a lot of these notches. So I'm trying to think of shapes that are meaningful to me, which they're not gonna make sense to other people, but that's kind of, that's fine. You know, it doesn't have to make sense to other people. I really do think the content, it just doesn't have to be literal. You know, it can be anything you want it to be. Now, as I work on these shapes, um, it, it feels kind of architectural, but I'm, what I'm really going for is these rectilinear shapes because they're the opposite of what's in the underpainting, which is all curvilinear. So that's what I'm focusing on. And uh, notice how I can use the residual paint on my painter's guide, this long tool, and just stamp you know, the leftover paint on various parts of the canvas and I get a very thin line. Notice how I'm, I'm just really kind of painting free form. I did not do any digital mock-ups here. Uh, what you're seeing is uh, basically trying to find shapes that help me to see the underpainting in a way 
that is exciting to me. So what that means is I'm using a very high key color. In this case, it's just white, but it's a very light value. And the reason why that's working as I paint over these grayish stripes is because the underpainting is done in mid-tone and darks, which means if I come over the top with, in this layer with uh, the light value, which it does look white, but there's actually variations within the white that you can't really see. What that allows me to do is feature what's below. And I'm just chipping away at the gray stripes and part of the underpainting and leaving behind those areas that I find interesting or that show the potential to be interesting. So even if they're not completely interesting right now, uh, what I plan on doing is, as I progress through this piece, continually uh, think about those areas, the little windows that you see, and how can I make them stronger, better, you know, either they don't have enough or they have too much, so it's either a matter of adding or subtracting. This is the process that I always go through. I never really know where I'm going, and I really like that. I feel like that allows me the most freedom to decide where I want to go with any one painting. And it also means that each painting is different. Same thought process, but a very different outcome. And the freedom comes in the playful beginnings, which I always find are the most important thing. And I always make some new discoveries in every single painting. It just, there is no like I've done this before, it feels the same. It, it, if that were to happen, I don't think I'd be very interested in painting. I always wanna make new discoveries. And I'm sure a lot of you are that way as well. But that's the fun of painting for me. It's a lot harder to um, Watch your edges somehow. Maybe it's because I'm not stepping back that much, but um, normally I care a lot more about the edges. Uh, the edges are kind of rough, but I can always, uh, I know, clean that up later. So I'm not really worrying about that. Mainly I'm just thinking about shape right now. And I kind of like this layering that's going on. I know I need to mix up a lot more paint of white and I know after I do this, I'm going to be sanding and glazing and <laughs> there are going to be a lot of um, different layers and things going on here. So this is just another stage. Okay, so I've been cutting out some strange shapes. And what I did was I, um, I did a search on uh, using Google to find some, you know, shapes of pattern pieces. So um, I know you probably can't see this very well but um, these just show some overall shapes. And you know, the shapes are pretty familiar to me, but like, this is the sort of thing that I like to look at, uh, you know, just visually, is a lot of crisscrossing lines and arrows and numbers and dotted lines and things like that. So this kind of inspired me just as I'm working on this painting because of some of the original shapes that I had on there. Uh, so you can kind of see where, like this would be a pant leg and this would be perhaps a skirt and, you know, part of a blouse or a dress, pockets, you know, that kind of thing. I'm just not quite sure like how I want to bring curves into, into like right now I've got a lot of these rectilinear shapes, you know, and that's fine, but there's so much curvilinear underneath that I want to somehow bring curvilinear back into um, the shapes here. So, um, I guess just by placing these, sometimes you can kind of get a feel for negative space, positive space. I mean, I kind of like that. If I were to say line up this bottom portion with what's happening down here, it's kind of a straight edge. Then, um, and if I, if I were to paint wherever this pattern piece is, um, this light color, then this is what would be left. And this, these pieces help me to see kind of what's left um, rather than just winging it. Because I found that if I just try to wing it, I get crappy edges and I mean, that's okay. Cause you know, this is explore. But um, if I have a better idea of where I'm trying to aim, 
my pieces, then I can focus more on the edge quality. And, you know, I care about the edge quality. So I'm just trying to figure out um, the best way to work with these shapes. Um, I've got verticals going on, diagonals, and here's a big horizontal. So, you know, I, I, I want one to win. So then the question is, do I want, you know, like this shape to um, go vertical or do I want to go horizontal? All those things kind of matter right now. So I'm sort of thinking about those things. And again, that's why this is the explore stage because I notice I'm saying I'm thinking. And whenever I catch myself thinking, that's when I know that I'm kind of beyond that play stage and I'm actually in the explore stage. Let's see, I'll do this and that's already white. I don't even really know where the tape is on the top of this thing, so I'm kind of just guessing. Paint is lumpy and bumpy because it's of uneven uh, thickness. I've sanded part of it. And I really like this, um, this shape here. So I'm really just using a pencil here to trace these uh, pattern, uh, sort of these stencils that are made with Bristol board. And the Bristol board is made by Strathmore and I can use these pieces again and again. That's what's nice about them. It's hard for me to see. Um, how this painting is progressing if I don't do what I'm doing right now as far as the, sh the new shapes. I've got to figure out what the negative shapes are doing. So this painting is very much about interlocking positive and negative shapes. You can probably see the interaction between them. They kind of interlock. Trying to get rid of the brush strokes a little bit. So I'm using a small brush for the fine work, which is defining the edges of the shape that I just drew. And then to do the internal areas, I can switch over to a bigger brush. But the edges, the edges matter. I just went over the edge, but that's okay. So here's a little bit of time lapse, and it's just uh, showing you my process. Uh, now here I'm sanding. And obviously I've had to let the paint dry thoroughly. That's really important. Make sure that if you're gonna do this, you let your surface dry thoroughly. And uh, the reason for sanding back is obviously to distress the surface, add a little bit of interest. Where there are bumpy areas of paint, you're gonna notice um, you know, little flecks of interest coming from below. It's kind of that old weathered feeling, and I, I really love that. But if you don't do that, then these white shapes are, they just look a little foreign and they don't integrate with the painting very well. A lot of artists will say, you know, it's, it's really hard for me to lose areas. I, I don't want to cover up areas that I love, but I think one of the things that really helps me are when I cut out these shapes, I'm able to hold them up over the painting and kind of just block out things and move these shapes around give me an idea of what is left and if I like what's left then I have a lot more courage to cover up things that I might like. It also offers me the chance to have a preview of you know what what's going to be left and it just it's just something that I, I think I've worked into my process for making stencils and masks because um, the advantage is that you really can move around 
And uh, I hope you'll try that too. Thanks everyone.